Uh, Mr. Laurie and I talk uh, every every time after the game. Every time um, I haven't talked to him yet today. Um, I know I know how supportive Mr. Laurie has been through everything. Um, I would say this about about that. You know I, what I was really doing. I was trying to bring energy yesterday, uh, energy, enthusiasm yesterday, and I, and I'm sorry and disappointed on, on how my energy was directed at, at the end of the game. And uh, you know my my energy should be all in on coaching, motivating. Right and celebrating with our guys, and so um, you know that that's you know, and I got to have better wisdom and discernment of when to use that energy, and that wasn't and that wasn't the time. And so um, you know, I, we have the best fans in the in the world. There's there's no place like this, and that, and they show up and show out no matter where they are, where we are. I, I can't you know Brazil, uh, Arizona, it doesn't matter, um, New Orleans. And, you know, in that game, too, that they had two, you know, it was loud. And I, I thought it was really loud, energetic. And those two uh, false starts that the Browns got um, that forced a field goal instead of that. And who knows? Like, they're third and th or they're fourth and eight, <clears throat> excuse me, at the eight-yard line. And then they get a penalty and they don't go for it on fourth and 13. Who knows how that goes? Um, and so our fans brought the energy, brought the, the passion, brought – uh, brought the juice and and like I said, um, yeah, that that's that's my answer to that. Thank you. We'll go to Ruben and then Jeff. Hey Nick, uh, I'm wondering what made you kind of feel the way you do. What you just articulated. What made you change your mind? Because after the game, um, you know, you said it was I was just having fun. What what changed sure. and yeah, you, were you aware of the, the the way the fans reacted? You know, there's there's play calls in the game that you you go through and you and, and game management things that you go through and say, you know, uh, at the time I thought this was the, the right thing, and then and then you 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 evaluate everything. You know, you evaluate the way the players played. You evaluate the the things that you did as a coach to um, get them ready to play, or the calls that you made, or the management of the game that you did. And you do the same thing with with other things, uh, which this one is. You wanted to bring energy yesterday, and you said your players asked you, you to do that, and now you're saying maybe you went overboard yesterday. How do you find a happy medium uh, to all that? What do you what do you feel like you need to do to, to get to that space? Yeah, again, I don't think there's a, a playbook for that, but I think at the end of the day it is, okay, you want to be – um, passionate and have energy just like I did in there today with the guys you know when we watch film together um, but again it's having that discernment of when to do that and again it is not a I wish there was a playbook on stuff like that and make it the job a little bit easier to do but it's it, but it's not and so it's got to be you know you got to have the discernment and the wisdom of when to do it and I think that at the end of the day it's like um, as I think about it and as I reflect on it it's you know are you are you are you coaching your butt off right throughout the week and coaching your butt off during the game? Are you, um, you know, motivating and pushing the right buttons? It's not necessarily motivating, it's wiring. You know, it's sometimes I think it, it, there, it's not, it's wiring the guys in the right way, not inspiring them, uh, wiring your, your, your habits. Um, and then it's just celebrating with them because that's so much fun of this. this. That's one of the best things you can have in this game. And, you know, some of the, the best memories I have of this game is the celebrations that you have in game, uh, the celebrations you have in the locker room after the game, you know, uh, stuff like that. And so I think that can be the baseline of everything. And, and uh, you know, and then, you know, uh, going from there. Now, uh, obviously, uh, you know, so that, that, that uh, to answer your question. Thank you. We'll go to Zach and then Brooks. Hey, good afternoon, Nick. Uh, what perspective do you have on why the special teams issues continue? multiple weeks here and if I can sneak in a quick injury question do you have a sense of of uh the Dallas Goddard and Darius Slay injuries yet yeah still getting a little bit more back on the on Dallas and and Slay we'll you know we'll have more on that um and so you know still it's still up in the air a little bit there um as far as the special teams you know I think what's happened is like we've had the the one catastrophic play each each game um with the past couple of weeks and that you know it's one one thing that really bothers me in coaching sometimes like we played a good game except well that that except counts right those those those, those count um, and you know in this particular case uh, you know a really good player made a really good play um, 
I, like I told you guys, I can't tell you how much respect I have for Miles Garrett and the player that he's been. Um, but he made a really good play, and you know we got to be better in that scenario. Um, he made the same play against Indy last year, same exact play. Um, and so we have to be better in that scenario. We got to coach it better. We got to execute it better, and be aware of where he is at all times, um, not you know offensively and um, and special teams wise. Shoot, if that guy goes in the game at tight end, I probably have no. I have no doubt in my mind that guy can make plays there. Uh, so we'd have to be alert for where he was there too, as uh, as well, because you know that's always your emphasis in this game of a game of matchups is don't let their their best guys beat you. And and he he made a really good play that turned the tide of that game yesterday. We'll go to Brooks and then Dave. Hey Nick, uh, you uh, in talking about your behavior, you said you related it to reviewing plays, like reviewing that. Who was a part of you that review for yourself was that just you was that Lurry? was that howie was that players you mentioned players that talked to you before like was that just your own process or was other yeah that's my that's in? my that's my self review after each game um i always think i i i do i probably do too good of a job of pulling myself through the mud at the end of the game but in, at the end of the day that one called for it and then also um that's the only way you get better We'll go to Dave and then Olivia. Hey, Nick, how much differently are you guys coaching those mesh concepts? Uh, and, and what was the impetus for that? Yeah, not, not a lot different. Um, not a lot different. You know, I think back to our, you know, um, 2022 at Washington, um, Zach Pascal gets a really similar play um, that set Smitty off for a really, really, really long run. Um, I think back to shoot i think back that he has to improve on um that you know we're that we're on the tape and that and that he's going to be working hard to to do but i thought i thought his youth and his energy uh really showed up on that on that field like I, he makes that play where the guy traces back and you can see his speed and athleticism making the play um martin say the first part of your question again i'm sorry um just like the difference as far as getting to the quarterback you guys had the five sack you know, you know, that's kind of how games go sometimes, you know, that, that, you know, there's opportunities in certain games. I thought our guys rushed well uh, when they had to rush individually. I thought our guys rushed in tandem as a group uh, well together when they were rushing with games. Um, you know, I thought Vic dialed up some really nice blitzes um, in certain situations. They got guys free. So I think it was a little bit of a combination of all three. And then there were some times where the um, – you know, the secondary had really good coverage. I think every time I looked at it, the secondary was tight um, and they were sticky in coverage. So it's good. it was really good team defense. Thanks. We'll go to Bo and then Chris. Hey, Nick, from a, uh, from a game plan standpoint, um, the, the numbers say was that the lowest amount of play action that you guys have ever run uh, under you. Why was that the case in, in this game? You know, different scenarios call for different things. Uh, that's a really good defense that – um, we're doing some different things that, that made certain things challenging. Um, and it got a lot of respect for Coach Schwartz. Um, obviously, he's, he's done the ultimate thing here and, and, and won a Super Bowl. Um, and so, so much respect for him and the coordinator he's been and the coordinator he is. Um, and so, they, they did some things that were challenging. Uh, again, um, I thought Kellen did a really nice job calling the game. Uh, I can't tell you how much, how, how, you know, how good of a job I think he did. Um, aggressive in, in certain situations where we need to be aggressive, which may not always be uh, typical of being aggressive, but he, he was. And, and, and so, you know, I thought he did a nice job calling the, calling the game. And I thought Jalen really did a nice job of handling the, um, the way the game was called and the, and the plays that were the way we're coming in and, and went to the right place with the football. I thought Jalen, um, you know, I'm just kind of adding to this. Jalen did a really nice job of, you know, starting off. You know, we really wanted to start fast, but we didn't. Um, you know, that was the, the emphasis. But, man, uh, how, how impressive was Jalen in the sense that you could start off 0, and 5 and then, uh, 0 for 5 and then complete 16 in your next 20 balls. Like, that, that's true definition of dog mentality. We'll go to Chris and then Bob. Hey, Nick, looking ahead to next week, you guys have to travel to MetLife Stadium again, a place where you guys have struggled in the past. What has caused those struggles, and 
what do you do to fix them, especially just like he's like one in three in those last in those last games? Yeah, I think it's the Giants uh, that 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 you know, and obviously we had a loss against the Jets. I don't think anyone's thinking about this where we're playing uh, or anything like that, Chris. Um, but you know, so it's it's really about how we we go about this game, um, and you know, you know, like for instance, there's been guys on this team that that haven't been part of some of those games. So we just got to go execute, control the things we can control. Um, if I thought it was a um, weather thing or anything like that, then we'd do something a little bit different. This has just been more of our execution and, and our coaching in, in certain games. And we'll, we'll go do our, we'll, we'll be hungry in, in this game and, and uh, you know, do the work that we need to do this week to get ready for this game.